is a physical frontliner than I am a virtual frontliner. My work doesn't involve taking on tear gas or rubber bullets, but it is equally as damaging and puts me under as much stress and danger as a frontliner by a more widely received de definition. I'm a volunteer international communicator and I write, speak and translate for a citizen-led broadcast platform called the Citizens Press Conference in Hong Kong. We aim to debunk the lies of our government by doing our own research, recovering the lost voices from the main narratives and broadcasting testimonies, testimonies by ordinary members of the public. As an entity, our existence is like a counter-government. Uh, counter our government has more than just abandoned us. They relentlessly spam us with blatantly false information in order to muffle any voices of reason and opposition, in order to brainwash the crowd and stop us from pursuing the truth. If the police force is used to crush our bodies so that the government may consolidate its power, then its discourse is used to vacuum out our minds so that our grip on the people remains intact. Our government hates it when we speak the truth. So they rob us of our freedom of speech and thought. It is the CCP's favourite tactic to divide and conquer. And thus our work is particularly crucial. We are the last line of defence on which we converge amid this diminishing capacity for us to speak for ourselves. It is only by making the truth widely known and available may the people make the best judgment and decisions for themselves. This is vital for the continuation and success of our movement. And this is why it is such exhausting work because we are going head to head against the government's political moves and because so much is happening so quickly every day. We have to be the people who follow up the most closely and analyse the most carefully and be the most mindful of saying the right thing. I work 16 hours per day on average, writing or translating easily five or six pieces of work per day. I'm on standby even in my sleep because I live in two or three time zones at once. I say that I even live in the gaps of time zones because it is as if I can't even afford to go to bed for fear that I would miss an emergency task or an event that suddenly broke out locally in Hong Kong. And because I work in a different time zone to my colleagues, when I pick up work after they've gone to sleep, when I need help, my calls on the group chat often go unanswered because no one would be immediately available. That's the feeling of being deserted by linear time, really, and never catching up, and I'm never getting a response back either. So I often just pass out as soon as I hit my bed, or just on my desk. Some of the times, I'm actually kept awake at night, not by work, but by the horrible things happening in Hong Kong that I need to write about during the day, as it sticks for such a long time. My nightmares do not just consist of being forced to run on a treadmill, chasing after unfinished tasks, but also the scenes of police brutality, covert murders, overt attacks on civilians, and even cases of torture, unsuspected rape of arrestees, which I need to write about during the day, every day. And in the morning, I wake up to the sound of my phone buzzing by my pillow. I keep a record of how many messages I wake up to on my group chats, and it's easily several hundreds or even a thousand. And I read them all to familiar myself of the discussion that I've missed. There is no signing off from my work. The fatigue is perpetual. The psychological distress over the, con over the content of my work is perpetual. And this is all voluntary work. I don't get a penny for what I do. And I'll be lying if I said I'm not burnt out. But it is crucial work that we are doing, and everyone in my team is working equally hard, and our health equally as compromised. I say even our personal safety, as well, is also compromised. My voice has been heard by over three million people. And because this is a voice that speaks against the regime, I'm quite sure that there are people around trying to hunt me down. 
Our chances to be arrested for serving our own homeland are as high as those who go up to the front line to face the police. This kind of danger is our everyday life in Hong Kong. How I wish I could just take off these shades today and look you in the eyes as I tell you my story. How I wish I could introduce myself to my teammates with my real name. But beneath this mask is a face that could belong to any Hong Konger and a voice that's genuine but is going extinct alongside millions of other equally truthful, desperate voices of the people in Hong Kong. We have nothing but our voices against a totalitarian giant who threatens and has already begun to destroy us. LV has nothing but her small frame against the police's guns and cannons. We are mush, but we still stand up like steel. We are still standing because of a moral calling, and it will only grow as we're touching more and more people every day. This is why I must propagate our messages tirelessly and defiantly, no matter what becomes of me. If we die, our spirit dies with us. If we fail, Western democracy fails. We are doing all this for the sake of our fellow people and for the integrity of the free world. This is bigger than myself and bigger than Hong Kong. No one can really imagine how this all would end, but we are holding on for a twist of fate, for the world to realise that this is all freedom-loving people's duty too, and this is a revolution of their time too. We cannot underestimate the CCP's intention to kill. We need your help in deterring them from doing that. So with this voice here, I implore you to see through to the successful passage of the Human Rights and Democracy Act as far as you can within your personal capacity. Hong Kong is ready for it. Please do it. Thank you.